We ask, Lord, that you would touch Father uh, in this opportunity and that to stand. We, we ask, Father, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of those that are here and those that are listening and those that are in the future, Father, that may get this video, Lord. And, Father, we just thank you for what you're doing here at the Fresh Start. It never fails to amaze me, Lord, the many blessings, Father, that you send down our way. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing. In the precious name of Christ, I'll pray. Amen and amen. All right. Chapter 13, verse number 14. We're starting off on a really a good verse here. Uh, I want everyone to be aware of what he's saying here, this being Christ. And uh, he says here in verse number 14, But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountain. First of all, Christ is saying, but when? Now, when you see this, he says, but when? It's not an if or by instance or maybe, but he's telling you this is going to happen. Amen. When will it happen? It will happen uh, in the time that God said it would happen. I've heard ministers bring this out and say, well, this is just for those that are uh, left behind uh, through the rapture. These are those that are left behind are going to have to go through this and see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, which is totally wrong, friends. If Christ is warning us of this, he would have put a criteria in here for those that are left behind for those that didn't make that opportunity you see it's not meant that way how man likes to twist the word of God around and conform it to their own thoughts you see the Bible calls that traditions of men we do not follow the traditions of man we follow what Christ has said so he says here again but when you shall see the abomination of desolation Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now, this abomination of desolation, this one that makes the place where he is desolate. Has anybody ever been to a desolate place? There's a there's a lake that's called a desolate lake, and it's just all dead. Just like the sea, the dead sea. It's a desolate sea. Just like the desert, it's desolate. So in other words, in that emptiness, in an emptiness of this place where he will be. He is the abomination. Now this abomination, you can, you can put about any word you would like to in that. For this abomination makes God sick. It makes him sick for what he is doing. So we take it here, he said, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Where did Daniel say that? Let's turn over to Daniel chapter 9. And see what he says here. Daniel 9 and verse number 27. Let's go to 26. And the vision, excuse me, I'm on the wrong one. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now this prince, you must know who this is. This is Satan, this prince of Tyre. And he said, and the end there, thereof shall be with a flood. What kind of flood? Of water? Lies. No, a flood of lies. These lies will come. Why will it be a lie? First and foremost, as I've always said, Satan will give the power to the Antichrist. There is no trueness in Satan whatsoever. He cannot tell the truth, for the truth is not any. Okay? So these lies that are going to come are going to come from the ministry that they're going to be pumping out. He said here, and, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. 27 is why we came. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This covenant is a gathering together in what the Word of God says is, is that he'll have the whole world. He will have the whole world whoring after him, chasing him, 
wanting all that they possibly can get from him. Why is that? Because of his power and the unlearning of the individuals that are following him. He said here, uh, with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the ovulation to cease. Now, this sacrifice is the communion, and this ovulation is of the Passover offerings. Why will he cause it to stop? Well, he will proclaim that he is Jesus, and he'll tell everyone, you don't need to uh, work communion any longer. You need no more of, to worry about these feasts, for I'm here. I'm here. You don't have to worry about it. You see, that's a lie. We know that, okay? And, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, which he is the desolator, okay? Even until the consumption and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Who are the desolate? Those that go whoring after him. Those that are empty. Those who have nothing. Those who have followed Satan all the way to the end, you see. They will be the desolate. They will be those that are done without. And it's a sad time. That's why we are here this morning doing what we can to preach this message and to warn the people. And to help the people. Back in Mark 13, verse 14, he said, But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, he shouldn't be there, okay? God, amen. He should not be there. That's why he said that. Let him that readeth understand. And I'm giving you the understanding this morning. Amen. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, what does Judea have to do with it? Well, Judea is, is the state that Jerusalem is in. And you're probably talking about, I believe it's like 13 miles from one another. From Judea to Jerusalem. 13 miles. I believe I looked it up and it's something like 21 kilometers. 13 miles. What's he trying to say here? Christ is warning you. And as we go on here, you'll see. He said here in 15, And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. What in the world are they doing on the housetop? They're watching. That's right. Amen. They are watching. Who is a watchman today? These are the ministers of the world. These are those that want to minister to the people. They are on the housetop, watching these events coming. But back in 14, he said, Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Why would they go to the mountains? Because, friends, let me say it like this. When you see that abomination of desolation, when you see the Antichrist set in Jerusalem, where he ought not be, and proclaiming to be Christ, you better get out of that. Amen? Amen. You Amen. better get away. Now, I don't know of any people here in East Tennessee that's going to be over there in Jerusalem, right. uh, over in Israel, over in the, right, at, that region right there. But if just by chance that you are, be sure and go. Amen? Right. Go. Just as fast as you can. Get away from it. Why? Because the power that the Antichrist will have will be so strong... And the conversion will be so many that if you aren't careful, you also could be lured in by his way and his cunning uh, uh, speeches and things of that nature. You see, that's, uh, that's what the Word talks about, how that he done uh, Eve in the garden. Yeah. She was beguiled, wholly seduced, completely seduced. That's how it will work in that day. He will do all that he can. If he has to buy you, he'll buy you. If he has to give you something of your weakness, that's what he'll give you. Friends, he's going to have power that no man has ever seen. Verse number 16. Let's go back to 15 again. He said, And neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. Now, why wouldn't you want to take anything with you? Because you ain't going to need it. You're not going to need anything, guys. You're not going to need to take any possessions with you. 
all of those 401ks and all that bars of silver and all of the, the gold that you got at the house, and you ain't going to need it. You're not going to need it where we're going. Amen. Right, amen. 16. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. Now, what's one doing in the field? They're working. Amen. He's talking about those that are working for the Lord. Those that are in the field, working for the Lord, doing God's will. When you hear of this, what did he say? Not turn back again for to take up his garment. Do not. This is a warning. I don't know about you, friends, but I don't know of very many places today that are preaching warning. That's right. They aren't preaching the warning that needs to go out today. This is a warning for the people to know that something is going to happen, a destruction is going to come upon the face of this world like we've never seen before. Right. Verse number 17. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. This is one of the most confusing scriptures for average individuals. I myself, not trying to trick anybody up, but just to see if they understand God's word. I'll go to a minister and I'll ask him, what do you think that scripture means? And it's kind of cunning. It probably, it probably isn't nice. But, hey, that lets me know whether or not they've studied God's Word or not. If they're going by traditions of man, or have they studied the Word of God? So what does it mean, Brother Randall? He said, but woe, now the woe means, hey guys, you're in trouble. Woe to them that are with child, and to them that get stuck in those days. We're talking spiritually here, friends. We're not talking about a young mother that's had a child. We're not talking about a young mother that is pregnant with a child. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking spiritually here. The spiritual sense here is, is the opposite of Luke 23. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 23 with me. Luke 23. In verse number 28. But Jesus turning unto them, them being the women that were at the foot of the cross. Peggy knows why I smiled this morning. We had this same scripture in our Sunday school hour. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in thee which they shall say, Blessed are the barren. What does barren mean? Those that have never had. And the wombs that never bear, and the paps that never gave suck. What's he saying? He's saying that if you go as far as to take on the Antichrist, if you go as far as to listen and you believe in him, Spiritually, you have been wholly seduced. That's right. You have been wholly seduced, and you are with child, per se. What does that mean, with child? Well, the Word of God tells us that we are to be a chaste virgin. That Christ is coming after a chaste virgin. Right. One that has never known man. In other words, never taken another doctrine. We haven't taken any other doctrine. We stay firm on the Word of God. We have listened to God's Word, and we have stayed firm on it. If you waver and you begin to listen to the Antichrist in his cunning ways, friends, you are taking in uh, that his doctrine. You are impregnated, per se. Men, women, whatever. You are impregnated with this spiritual sense, this mislearning of the Word of God. What does he mean by the pack? Well, if you feed a child, you breastfeed a child, you are giving them the nourishment that they need. Same concept, if you believe in what the Antichrist has said, and you become a spokesperson for the Antichrist, you are feeding those people. You understand that? Say amen. amen. All right. Awfully quiet this morning. 
But he said here, but woe to them that are with child and to them that get stuck in those days. We understand that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the spiritual sense and that we are to not take on the doctrine of the Antichrist. This is the warning, you see. This is that warning that we have. We have it out here on our sign. I don't know if anybody ever looks at that sign. You can't see my name anymore because Mike Planning pushes up underneath and took my name away. But anyway, the top of the sign is the most important part. It says, warning, do you know when the true Christ comes? That's a question. Maybe it might intrigue somebody right. coming down the road and might inquire that opportunity to ask and say, hey, you know, what does that mean? But he says here in verse 17, or excuse me, verse 18, and pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Why wouldn't you want to be taken in the winter? Well, folks, let me say this. You don't do any harvesting whatsoever in the winter. Right. The closest that you get to winter harvest would be garlic, Bob. About the, about the most you could get out of the winter, okay? So we know that there is no harvesting in the winter. So what does that mean? That you do not want to be taken out of season, okay? You don't want to be taken early. You don't want to be taken out of season. Got a running joke. Don't be offended at this, Brother Paul. But we, we tell them boys that most times you, you just been pulled green. That's the only problem. Why, that's why you in stature you're only, you know, you, it, Father just pulled you green. No. But to know that we're to not be taken out of season means that we are to wait upon the Lord, okay? Amen. Keep that in your mind, that we are to wait upon God and endure to the end. Amen. They that endure to the end, the shall same be shall be saved. Amen. It makes so much sense after Amen. someone clarifies and brings it to your attention right. and begins to open up your eyes to the trueness of the word. Amen. Now, when you come across these scriptures and you say, well, man, I don't know what that means. And you go on to the next one, it's far left field. You have no idea what that means. You might want to inquire with the Lord to show you, to open up your eyes. Sure. We need our eyes Clearly open today. Amen. We need our ears clearly open Amen. so that we can hear God's word and understand it with clarity. That's right. 19. For in those days shall be affliction uh, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. This word affliction is persecution, okay? You are not going to be beaten. You're not going to be poked at, and no one's going to throw rocks at you. But the persecution that you're going to get because you do not follow the Antichrist. Can you imagine the whole world being on a a fad, per se? And you're the only one not on the fad? Can you imagine how that would be? How people will point at you and, and, and mock you and make fun of you? But that's okay. That's all right. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time neither shall be. Confirming this, let me go over to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that uh, that are therein shall be burned up. Now, he's talking here about the two trips, the two tribulation, the tribulation of Satan. This tribulation that Satan will bring will be a tribulation of deception, a time of deception. Right. And he will do all that he can to deceive the world. Amen. But that second trib, when the word talks about how that, here, he said that in Second Peter, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt. This elements he's talking about are the rudiments of the world. He's talking about the rudiments. What are the rudiments, Brother Randall? That are these 
four hidden dynasties that rule your life. These dynasties that control you. These rudiments, the evil of the world. You say, well, I didn't think that education and religion and politics and, and these, these, these economics, well, all these would be evil in a way. Well, they actually are because of who runs them and who pumps it in. You see, the banks are not out to help you guys. Sorry, right. they're out to make a dollar on you. The teachers are not out to teach you true wisdom. They are teaching you what is pumped down the pipe. Amen? Right. They are given what they are to teach. That's right. Religion today will send you to a devil's hell. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All of these things that we have to deal with will be done away with. We... Know that Christ, when he comes, he will do away with it all. When he sets up his kingdom, it will be a time of learning, and there'll be no deception. There'll be no deception whatsoever. Everything that will be brought from Christ will be delivered to the Zadok, and the Zadok will go out and to give it to the people, teach the people, and everything that we get in that time will be pure. It'll be good. Be good for us. These things that we have today coming our way, you have to wade through it to see what's good and what's not. And that's what Christ says about this deception. He's going to do away with this rudiment of the world. Back in Mark 13, verse number 20. And except that the Lord had shortened the days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. You should have shouted right there. Amen. Thank God he has shortened the days. Amen. He shortened it because the, of the elect's sake. You. He shortened it for you. Who is the elect? Let's look over there in Matthew 20. Matthew 20. I'm going to give you a little bit of insight here. It might help some of you. Hopefully it does. Matthew chapter 20. And verse number 16. He said, "For So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few are chosen. What do you mean by that? The last shall be first. During that time of revolt, during that time of the catapult, the destruction of this world, Father seen exactly who it was that was standing on the side of Satan, and he seen exactly who it was that was standing on the side of the Lord. The last shall be first. Those that were chosen last during that time will come through this dispensation first. But, and the first last, those that he's seen that would fight for him and who, who had no stuttering, had no uh, decisions to make other than to stand up for God, they will come in last. Why? Why will they come in last? You have been brought through this dispensation through this generation for a reason. You are the elect of God if you understand how these things transpire. The elect of God are no more special than anybody else. It's just that you have that wisdom and that understanding to know how all these things transpire. But he brought you through this last generation. He brought you through this time for a reason so that you could be a spokesperson for the Lord. So that you could be one that will stand against the Antichrist just as you did against Satan in that day of revolt. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. That's a beautiful Amen. concept. Amen. And for somebody not be able to get that, it just breaks my heart. He said, but for the elect's sake whom he had chosen, he had shortened the days. Prove that to me, Brother Randall. Okay, well, let's go over there to Revelation chapter 9. 
I want you to see here what Father says he's going to do. Revelation chapter 9, verse number 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. Now the first them, them, he said, and to them it was given, them being the hordes of angels that will come with Satan to do his work. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. Them who? But that they should be tormented five months. These are they that do not want to come to the fresh start. These are they that do not want to open up the Word of God. These are they that would soon just listen to some man and be deceived and follow the Antichrist. He said here, he said, and it was to them was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months and that the torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. There's no antidote from being struck by a scorpion. Your nerves are paralyzed. The same way that you would be if you are in a stupor. If you are in a stupor and don't understand Romans chapter 11, you don't understand. It's kind of like the Bible talks about how that when you fall asleep on your arm and when you're starting to come alive and the blood's starting to come back to it, you can't really function. You can't you ever do that. Your leg goes to sleep and you get up and you gotta try to walk and you can't you can't make that thing do anything. That's exactly what he's talking about. You'll be in such a stupor, you'll be paralyzed to a point where you can't even function because of the lies. In other words, you won't know when the true Christ comes. You'll be so deceived, not you, I'm just saying an individual will be so deceived that they won't know the truth from a lie. These five months that we're talking about here, it has been shortened. Daniel's prophecy talked to us about how that it was three and a half years. How that this tribulation should come and be of uh, three and a half years. But God said, I will shorten it five months. What is five months? Five months for God's people is 150 days. Let's confirm that. Go to Genesis chapter 7 and verse number 24. Genesis 7 and chapter 7 and verse number 24. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. The same concept of the lies that will be flooding across this world during that time. How long will it be here? For a hundred and fifty days. That's all the length of time that Satan has. He does not have not one minute more. And he'll take every day that he can get, guys. He'll take every one of them. So what does that mean? Brother Randall, does that mean that I've got to endure for 150 days? Yes, sir, that's what it means. Does that mean I don't need to partake in anything that the Antichrist has given? That's exactly what it means. Well, what about my income? And what about uh, my way of life? And what about these things that I'm going to be needing during that time? God's asked you to do something. Put up provisions for yourself. Provide for yourself right now while you have time. Put up provisions uh, to carry you through. We get on through the scripture here, you're going to see something. Back in Mark 13, verse number 21. So we, we, in verse 20, we know that this time has been shortened for five months to 150 days. You see, when it's given in months, it's given to the lunar. It's given to those that worship the lunar, which is Satan. Yes. Okay? We are of the solar. We are of the sun. We are given our prophecy in day. Okay? So it says here in verse 21, 
And then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe them not, baby. Don't listen to it. Why is that? I said it before, I'll say it again. If they say that Jesus is here, and you've watched him on TV, all you got to do is pinch yourself. And if it hurts you, uh, then friends, you know that Christ is not here. It's the easiest concept in the world. You will never see Christ while you are in the flesh. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Christ will never come until he sets up his kingdom. He's not going to come and coerce you for 150 days and try to get everybody. Hey, friends, that's what this day is for. Amen. That's what this time is for. Harden not your hearts, you see. The word of God says that he is calling right now. Calling all sinners to come to repentance. Right now is the time of preparation. Amen. Verse number 22. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. He's going to show signs and wonders. He's going to, in other words, call down fire from heaven and work miracles in the sights of men. Again, when was the last time you seen somebody work a miracle? It's going to be an astounding time. It's going to be a mind-boggling time. That's why you must have your mind focused on God's Word and prepared for that day. Full preparation is needed. Is there an example to this? Sure there is. Turn with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. God has given us this in the Old Testament and warned us of this. I want you to read it with me. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 4. I still hear some leaves ruffling. I'll wait for you to get there. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 4. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he shall speak unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. First and foremost, God's not going to send somebody to pull you away from Him. That's common sense. We understand that. That's very easily understood. Verse 3, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Amen. God's expecting you to be firm on who you believe, not to be wooed by some uh, easy words that is given. How is it that they're going to do this? I know we're going to a lot of places this morning, but turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I tell you what, if we don't do anything over here at the Fresh Start, we get the cobwebs out of the Word. Amen? Amen. We get the cobwebs Amen. out of your Bible. Praise Amen. God. All right. He said here in verse number 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us that that day is at hand. Let no man deceive you. Uh-oh. That means perk up. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Well, that just shoots that rapture theory clean out of it. That blows it clean out of the, out of the water. Amen? He says here, in three, he said, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitting in the temple of God, Shewing himself that he is God. You see, there's that abomination that we're talking about. That's right. Amen. That makes the, the area desolate, makes that temple desolate. 
5. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? This is Paul speaking. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. He will be revealed. Oh, friend. Even if you don't own a television and you've got to go to the doctor, it's going to be on TV. It's going to be, he's going to be the talk of the world. Six, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Now this was back in Paul's day, friends. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now we're talking about here, about uh, later, Revelation chapter 12 where he talks about he is kicked out of heaven. Who's holding him? We know that Michael has got him chained down. Amen? And he who will let, at that time, he'll let him loose. When Father tells him to. When is that, Brother Randall? That's at the sixth trump. Okay? Eight. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. <laughs> I love that. Nine, even him who is coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. After the work of Satan, meaning that he is getting his power from Satan. All that the Antichrist does will be powered by Satan, you see. Right. Ten, with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. What is the love of the truth, folks? The Word of God. The unfallible Word of God. The unadulterated Word of God. The true Word of God. The full simplicity of God's Word. Amen. That is what you must have. Amen. The love of the truth. If you love the truth this morning, say amen. 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 I love the amen. truth. For the Word says the truth will set you free. Amen. And if you're free, then friends, you're free, free in me. Free, free from amen. what? I'm free from sin. I'm free from being captive. I'm free from being taken over. I am free. Because I know the truth. Amen. amen. Eleven, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Wow. What lie is that? The lie that Satan will be pumping out during his revival for the 150 days. Twelve, to come to a close on that, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, what about those, Brother Randall, that always went to church, but yet the minister never really got around to teaching them anything like this? That's a sad situation, friend. That's why God will have two men that will come before the Antichrist will come. They're called the two witnesses. And they will come, and the Spirit of God will be pumping through them, friends, like nobody's business. And when they speak, it will touch the hearts of those that have an inclination. Those that understand, you're talking about a team, friend. We're going to be rooting for that team. Amen? We're going to be rooting for them two young men, older men. We're going to be rooting for them. But for those that don't understand and do not want to hear the truth, they're going to turn them off. Turn them off out. Well, friends, again, it's going to be all over the, the web, all over the television, all over anything of a device that you have, all of it's going to be centered on that at that time. Back in Mark 13. 22 again. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce if it were even the elect. I know that God's people are going to do all they can to help their family. Turn with me over to 2 Corinthians 11. I want to bring something out here for you. This is what Paul has said here. 
Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. There's that chaste virgin that we need to be. We need not to take on all sorts of doctrines, regardless how good it sounds. You know, that rapture theory does sound good. It sounds in, enticing. But the problem with it is it's a lie. The Word of God says nothing for it. Matter of fact, Ezekiel chapter 13 talks against it. Amen? It tells us not to take that. So he says here again in verse number 3, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, you see that serpent will be back, beguiled Eve through his subtility. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, now if you underline and you mark in your Bible, you might want to mark this one right here. He said, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. You're liable to be turned over. You're liable to be turned over to that Antichrist, you see. That's what Paul's trying to say here. He's trying to warn us in every aspect. Say, Brother Randall, why do you have to go all over the Bible and that to make your point? Friends, I want to make sure that we have confirmation, not from Randall, but from the Word of God. The true Word of God. Amen. The most precious thing this world has ever had. That's right. God's Word. God's Word will confirm itself from beginning to the end. Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lo, I come to you in the volume of the book. And the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. God's Word is infallible, and we need it to be able to find the truths about this world and this situation coming. Oh, it's a situation, all right. It's a big situation, and it's a problem. Because the majority of the world today are set out on easy believism. They're set out on easy believism. They'd soon believe a lie than to get into God's Word Amen. and study it for themselves. Amen. Timothy told us, he said, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ashamed? What do you mean ashamed? How can I be ashamed? Well, when the true Christ does come, and he reveals himself, those that have went and worshipped the Antichrist, they're going to be ashamed at that time. They're going to cry that the mountains fall upon them to hide their faces from the God that's coming. Amen? Amen. Okay, verse 23, back in 13. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Has Christ not told us all things? How far have we went this morning? We have went all the way as far as to Genesis and then Deuteronomy, all the way into the New Testament, all the way to the back of the book. Christ has told us all things. Uh, and again, what have I got on the side of mine? I hope you want to come and see it someday. No excuses. I have foretold you all things, meaning there is no excuses, friends. We have it right here. And again, if you don't own a Bible, see me after church. I'll purchase one for you. You need to know God's Word. You need to be prepared. You need to know all the aspects, how it's going to happen, inside and out. Amen? You ever wanted to be good at your job? You ever had a desire to want to do better and to be promoted? And to, Friend, you want to know that job inside and out. You want to know all the aspects that you possibly can about that job. Same way with God's Word. How many of you here want to make heaven your home? Amen. Amen. That's the whole household. Then therefore we need to get in God's word and to find out what he says. Amen. Amen. And confirm. Amen. 
That's what we do here. Amen. That's what we, we strive to do. All right. Verse number 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Now, friends, here again, we were talking about the seals uh, when we began this study. This is your sixth seal. Turn with me over to the book of the Revelation, chapter 6. Chapter number 6, verses number 12 and 13. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black and the, as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. This darkening will be the spirit that Satan will have when he comes. He will darken the truth of God's word as much as he possibly can. He will do everything he can to take the truth of God's word and abolish it from your eyes. Wouldn't surprise me you don't come and try to take up your word. Wouldn't surprise me you don't come and try to take up the Holy Bible, you see. 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. The stars of heaven, we're talking about the angelic beings here, the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely fig, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. We see here that these things are going to happen during that time. Back in Mark 13, verse number 24, or excuse me, 25. I just read to you verse 13. Let's see how it compares with what Christ said. 25, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Again, these stars of heaven are the angelic beings that will come with Satan that have been reserved until that time to come. They will come and have power that is given to them. Verse 26, and then shall they say, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. That is a time of gathering. Turn back with me in Revelation chapter 6 verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. Wow. Can you confirm that, Brother Randall? Do I need to? I can. Let's go over to Zechariah chapter 14. One of my favorite places to be. I love what this scripture tells us. Zechariah 14, verse number 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and they spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses ruffled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations uh, as were uh, when he fought in that day of battle. There's a lot here. I can't take time to explain it all, but I'm getting down to something. For, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and behold, of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. In other words, when Christ comes, there will be a destruction. Anybody that can take a moment and look at that picture back there of Jerusalem, there's no valley in there right now, guys, but yet there will be. 
That part that you can't see in those groves, that's the Mount of Olives. That one foot is going to stand right there. One of the reasons why I put that picture there. Amen. Just to give an example for everybody to understand where I'm talking about, that when he comes, he'll have that destruction come upon this world, you see. It's going to be a time like man has never seen. Okay, back in Mark 13, verse number 28. This is a very important part right here. For the, time, for the sake of time, I'm going to try to get through this just as quick as I can. But I, I don't want to overlook anything. <clears throat> Verse 28. Now learn a parable. Did he say please or did he say if you got time or maybe? No. He's made a commandment to the elect. <coughs> now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branches is yet tender and put a fourth leaf, you know that summer is near. Anybody that knows any horticulture at all, you know that you don't plant a fig tree. You put out a shoot. And when that shoot comes out, it brings forth what? Leaves. Now this tree that he's talking about here is bringing forth leaves. He said, and you know that summer is near. Meaning that you know that this time is coming. This generation that we're talking about here is the generation of the parable of the fig tree. This parable you need to know. What is the parable, Brother Randall? What, what all does it really mean? If you understand that there are an enemy in this world, a people in this world that is an enemy of God. If you understand that, you understand the parable of the fig tree. Where does it say that? We can take and document that in Genesis chapter 3. As we know that when Eve was beguiled by Satan, that there was a union that was done inside that garden. We won't go into details of all of it today, but through that deception and through that beguiling came two children, Cain and Abel. As we go through in chapter 4, you don't see where Cain slew Abel. We know that Cain was the seed of Satan. Abel was the seed of Adam. Eve being the mother of both of them. So you can come to your own conclusion what happened. Amen? For the sake of the children in the audience this morning, we'll just say that we have a people here that are rearing up against God. We'll call them the Kenites of the world. If you understand who the Kenites are, you understand the parable of victory. You understand you know that there is a people out here that's trying to ruin everything of God. The education, the economy, the religion, the politics, all of these things are ran by the Kenites. Twenty nine. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is not even at the door. Thirty, for I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. This generation started, folks, in 1948 when Israel became a nation. In 1948, May 15th, that's when this happened. And we know that this is a generation. And how long is a generation? A generation can be anywhere from 70 to 120 of years. But yet we're going to take it and know that it is in our time that this thing is going to happen. 31, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. 32, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. No, we do not know the day, and we do not know the hour. 
that day and that hour is not as important as is important to know all the events that will transpire to the coming of the Lord. You know, if you read over there in Revelation chapter 11, there'll be two witnesses that'll come. And at the end of that, when we see that these two witnesses stand back to their feet after dying and laying in the street three and a half days, as soon as they stand up, the Bible says that Father received them unto him. They disappear, folks. You better know it's on then. The coming of the Lord is very not within the hour. 33, take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when this time is. Again, Revelation 11 tells you. If you have enough understanding about the word of God, you'll know that these things transpire. <coughs> 34, for the Son of Man is as a man taken for a, uh, taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Now this house that we're talking about that he left, he left in Bethel, did he not? Amen? All right. So we know that Christ left and he gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter. Who is the porter? The porter should be the man of God. He's the one who holds the door and lets no evil come in. It's my position to not let any evil come through that door. You wonder why I pray that, Father, you put a hedge around us? That's why, friends. Evil, if it can, it will rear itself up as often as it possibly can and infiltrate himself or herself inside the house of God where the true worship is done. It's important that the porter watch and keep his eyes open all the time that he watches for evil at any day. Amen. He said here in 35, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. <clears throat> Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. I have to go here. I'm not going to hold you much longer. i got to go here. Turn with me to Matthew 26. I can't help myself. I, I, I put all this time into this and study it through, and, and I get all of this in it. And I've got days in this, guys, but yet it, 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 it's so intriguing. It's so wonderful. Matthew 26, verse 40. I'm going to compare this with you right here. I want you to use this for a com comparison of what Christ has said right here. Now, going back, you stay where you are. He said, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. 40 says here, he said, and he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto them, Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? That reference of the one hour is the reference of the hour of temptation that we will go through. That's that 150 days. Can you not watch with me one hour? It is important that we watch and we know how these things are going to transpire and that we keep our eyes open and you stay with a minister that's a porter that will warn you when these evils come. Amen? Amen. It's important that we all help one another. Amen. That we prepare our homes and our families that we get everybody prepared. Uh, 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Friends, if that doesn't go with the times that we're reading, if that doesn't go with that hour of temptation, I don't know what does. Amen? Back in 13, he said, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Keep your eyes open. If you'll run down the page there and you'll look over here in Mark 14, verse 37 and 38, it's the same concept but worded just a little bit different. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest thou not watch one hour? Again, there's that hour of temptation. 38. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. If it intrigues the flesh, that's exactly how Satan will come. If it is a desire that you have, 
Satan will fulfill it. We need to realize that at that time when we know that the Antichrist is here, friends, we need to shut off desires. We need to shut off our minds and hearts and desires of this world. You need to quit striving after things that are never going to be and buckle down and fasten your heart and your mind on the coming of the Lord. We finished it, amen. When will these things be? It'll be just in the time that Christ said, He that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. Amen. Mark 13.